Do you want to implement clean, scalable and maintainable architecture for your backend? In this video, we'll explore how to use the repository pattern with a TypeScript to achieve clean architecture in your Node.js applications. By the end, you'll understand how this design pattern decouples data access, keeps your code base flexible and aligns with industry best practices. Hi. My name is Alex, I'm a senior software engineer with years of experience in JavaScript and Node.js. My goal is to help you become a confident and stress-free developer by increasing your skills and proficiency. Let's get started. I am in Node.js Express project. This is a task manager API. Let's take a look at the code that returns the tasks. As usual, the link to the GitHub repository for this code is in the description below. In routes v1 task folder, index.ts file has routes to list tasks, get task, create and update task. The handler functions for the routes are in the controller.ts file. The project routes and the project controller are structured in the same way. The route handlers, be they in the tasks or projects controller, access database directly using Prisma client. Although simple, this design presents a few problems such as tight coupling, reduced testability, and scalability issues. Let's fix these problems by introducing a repository. Before we start coding, let's take a look at what we're actually going to implement. The current state of the application is such that tasks and projects controllers have Prisma ORM as a direct dependency. By creating a repository, we will remove this dependency. At the heart of the repository pattern lies an interface. This interface is a contract that ensures that the repository will provide a set of specific methods and specific outputs to the controllers or client code in general. Now, instead of having a direct dependency on Prisma ORM, tasks and projects controllers depend on the interface. This interface is implemented by Prisma repository that has Prisma ORM as a dependency. Now, if we decide that we don't want to use Prisma ORM and use SQLize or NoSQL database, all we have to do is create a SQLize or Mongoose repository that implements the interface. No changes to controllers are needed. And as you can imagine, large projects have a lot of controllers, so repository pattern can potentially save us a huge amount of work if we decide to make changes to how our application accesses data. Now let's take a look at how we're going to implement the repository. We're going to use TypeScript mixins with inheritance. Uh, on the one hand, this approach provides simplicity. The client code just has to import the repository and call appropriate methods. On the other hand, the, it provides separation of concerns. Each mixin is designed to handle a specific entity, project or task. Since both mixin repositories extend the base repository, they inherit its functionality, enabling efficient code reuse and adherence to the dry or don't repeat yourself principle. Very much like Russian dolls, the mixins and the base repository are combined into a single repository that is instantiated and imported in the client code. Now that we know uh, what and how we're going to be building, let's create some code. But before we do that, if you are learning something new from this video, please like and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. We're going to create repository.ts file in SRC data repositories folder. This file will contain interfaces. Let's put the following code in there. We will export a uh, iTask interface. It represents a task in the system with various properties that describe its attributes. Uh, and the properties are ID, unique identifier, user ID, the ID of the user to whom the task belongs, project ID, the ID of the associated project, name, description, due date, the due date for the task, completed on the date when the task was completed, and created at the date when the task was created. I project interface represents a project in the system with the properties that describe its details. And they are ID, unique identifier for the project, user ID, the ID of the user who owns the project, name, description, and created at the date when the project was created. As you can see, these interfaces mimic the database structures for task and project, except for leaving off updated at fields. Next, we will define query parameter interfaces. We will need them for listing tasks and projects. 
iQuery Parameters interface serves as a base interface for query parameters. It has the following properties. Limit optional, a number specifying the maximum number of results to retrieve. An offset also optional, a number indicating the starting point of in a collection for pagination. As you may have guessed later on, these properties will be used for pagination. iTest Query Parameters interface extends iQuery Parameters, inheriting its properties. It adds properties specific to task-related queries. For now, it is just one. Project ID, which is optional, a string representing the ID of the project to filter task by. Later on, we will add other properties to be able to filter tasks by due date and complete it on. iProject Query Parameters interface extends iQuery Parameters, inheriting all its properties. This interface does not add any properties for now. In the future, we may add specific properties to be able to filter projects as well. Finally, let's define interfaces for task and project repositories. iTask repository interface represents a repository for managing task-related data. It has methods listTask that retrieves a list of tasks based on the query parameters, optionally filters tasks for a specific user ID, and returns a promise that resolves to an array of iTask objects. GetTask fetches a single task by its unique ID, optionally ensures the task belongs to a specific user ID, returns a promise resolving to an iTask object, create task, creates a new task using the provided partial task data payload, optionally associates the task with a specific user ID, and returns a promise resolving to a newly created task object. Update task uh, updates an existing task identified by ID using the provided partial task data payload, optionally ensures the update is performed for a specific user ID and returns a promise resolving to the updated iTask object. iProject repository represents a repository for managing project-related data. The methods are list projects. Uh, retrieves a list of projects based on query parameters, optionally filters projects for a specific user, and returns a promise resolving to an array of iProject objects. Uh, GetProject fetches a simple project by its unique ID, optionally ensures the project belongs to a specific user ID, and returns a promise resolving to iProject object. With interfaces defined, let's create repositories. We will start with a base repository by creating a base repository.cs file in src data repositories folder. The base repository will contain the following code. We will import Prisma client from add Prisma client and export default base repository class. This class acts as a base class for other repository classes. It provides default query parameters, default limit, and default offset that can be used for database operations, and it also initializes a Prisma client. It has a getClient method that returns the Prisma client instance. This method is useful if external code needs access to Prisma client. Base repository file also exports a constructor type. This is a utility type that is used in Mixins pattern. It has TA generic type parameter that defaults to an empty object and a constructor uh, function that accepts any arguments and returns an instance of type T. If you would like to learn more about TypeScript mixins, check out TypeScript handbook. It explains how mixins work and how to create one. All right. It looks like ESLint is complaining about an empty object type and explicit any. Let's go ahead and fix it by turning off these rules in eslint.config.mgs file. Now let's create a task repository.cs file in the same src data repositories folder. We will import entity not found errors from add errors entity not found, base repository and constructor from base repository, Prisma from add Prisma client, iTask, iTask query parameters, and iTask repository from repository. We will also define Prisma task type that represents the raw database payload for a task entity retrieved using Prisma. Add task repository function is a mixing function that takes a base class tbase and extends it with task related methods. 
it returns a class task repository mixin that implements the iTask repository interface and provides methods for querying, creating, updating, and mapping tasks. Map task uh, method converts a raw Prisma task object into an iTask object for consistency across the application. List tasks method retrieves a list of tasks from the database. It supports filtering by user ID and project ID with optional limit and offset for pagination. If limit and offset are not present in the task query parameters, the default values are used from the parent base class. List tasks returns an array of mapped tasks. Get task method fetches a single task by its ID and user ID. It throws an entity not found error if the task is not found. This entity not found error will be handled by error handler that we created earlier. If you want to learn how to do it, please check out the video about error handling in Express application. It returns map task. Create task creates a new task in the database, uh, uses user ID and the provided payload for the task data, and it returns the map task. Update task updates an existing task by ID and user ID, accepts a partial iTask object as the update payload, and returns the map task. Now let's define project repository by creating add project repository.cs file in SRC data repositories folder. We will import entity not found error from an errors entity not found, base repository and constructor from base repository, Prisma from a Prisma client, iProject, iProject query parameters, and iProject repository from repository. We will define Prisma project type that represents the raw database payload for a project entity retrieved using Prisma. We are going to export add project repository function, a higher order function that takes a base uh, class T base and returns a new class project repository mixin with a project related functionality. Map project method converts a raw Prisma project object into iPrisma object for consistency across the application. List projects method retrieves a list of projects belonging to a specific user. It supports pagination using limit and offset query parameters and returns an array of mapped projects. Get project method fetches a single project by its ID and user ID. If the project is not found, it throws entity not found error and it returns a mapped project. Now let's combine all the mix scenes that we just defined into a single repository class. Let's create index.ts file in src data repositories folder. We will import base repository, add task repository and add project repository. We're going to use function composition or the chaining of functions to create an instance of repository and export it. We're all set. Now let's go ahead and update the code in the controllers to use the repository. In tasks controller, we will just leave request and response imports from Express. Instead of all other imports, we will import a repository from add data repositories. Inside the list tasks function, we will use repository list tasks method, uh, passing to it an empty object for now. Later on, we will add more properties to it to filter tasks and user that we get from rec auth payload sub. This property comes from a parsed authentication token. Get task function will use repository get task method with a task ID coming from request parameters and user ID. Create task function uses repository create task method and takes validated request body and user ID. If you would like to learn how we validated request body, please check out the video about request validation in Node.js APIs. Update task function uses repository update task method that takes task ID to be updated, validated request body, and user ID to ensure only user that created the task can update it. Now let's go to projects controller. We will remove all the imports except for request and response import from Express, and we will import repository from add data repositories. List projects function will use repository list projects method and pass to it an empty query object and a user ID. Again, later, uh, this empty object can be used to filter projects. 
get project function will use repository get project method and pass to it project ID coming from request parameters and user ID to ensure the project belongs to the user. Finally, in list project tasks function, we will use repository list tasks method with a project ID as a query parameter and user ID as the second argument to ensure that the tasks also belong to the correct user. We're all done. Let's start the project with npm run dev and quickly check if everything still works. We'll go to api test.http file, get task endpoint still returns the tasks belonging to the authenticated user. Get projects endpoint also works as well. Looks like the refactoring to repository pattern was successful. In this video, we used Prisma ORM and TypeScript mixins to create a repository. If you would like to learn how to create repository using SQLite and repository inheritance approach, please check out the video on how to use repository pattern in JavaScript.